And here's an interesting question in Calc 1 that you probably didn't solve. What's x to the x power prime? Does anyone know how to do this? It's probably hidden in some exercise in that gigantic calculus one book. Um, but I can show you how to do this in Calc 1 uh, later, but because it's hard to think, uh, let me first show you how to do this in Calc 3 chain rule. And then after that, you will, uh, I'll show you how to do it actually in, uh, hmm? Do you know how to do it? No? Okay. I mean, we know how to do x to the n, right? Or what about n to the x? Does anyone know how to do this? Okay. Yeah. A to the x, if you differentiate, it's a to the x times ln of a. You probably recognize that one. Okay. But if, if both the exponent and the base is increasing at the same time, if you increase x, then it's neither of these cases. This is the case when the exponent is constant. This is the case when the base is constant. For each individual case, you know how to calculate. But this, you don't know how to calculate. That, that's the crux of the question. That, that's why the, this question is harder. Here's a Calc 3 approach. First, set f of u comma v as u to the v power. Okay? And then, I set u as x and v as x. You kind of see why I'm doing this, right? Yeah. That means f as a function of x is x to the x power. Okay. So in order to answer this, what are we trying to, to find? How f changes when you change x. Because this is like differentiating by x, right? So that's, that's how, how, how I make, rephrase this question in the Calc 3 context. The dependence diagram is f depends on u and v, and u and v both depend on x. And therefore, if I want df dx, the multivariable chain rule says, first I have to figure out how f changes when you change u, and then I have to figure out how u changes when I change x, plus I have to figure out how f changes when I change v, times how v changes when I change x. Okay, let's carry on. Now, what's the derivative of u to the v when you differentiate by u? Now, let, let, let's think about this carefully. That means you're considering v as a constant, right? Yeah. So that's like differentiating x to the n, where the, the exponent is constant, and this is the function that's changing. Okay? So what's the derivative of u to the v if you differentiate by u? V comes down, because it's like the n, right? Times u to the v minus 1, right? So that's what you get. You get v times u to the v minus 1 times, what's the derivative of u by x? 1. Okay. Now let's think about this. How does f change when you change v? So in other words, what's the rate of change of this function when you change v while fixing u. That's like differentiating a to the x, right? The exponent is changing, the base is unchanging. In that case, the formula is a to the x ln of x, right? ln of a. So using that formula here, what do you write? To the u to the v ln of u. OK times, what's the rate of change of v over x? Partial, uh, no, uh, derivative of v, what's, it's just 1, right? OK, so we're almost there. Uh, then, because v and u are both equal to x, I can just plug in x into both of them, right? So v is x, x to the x minus 1, 
And by the way, x is x to the first power plus x to the x times ln of x. And because they have the same base, the exponents add up, you get x to the x plus x to the x ln of x. So that's the final answer that you're supposed to get. And now let me show you how to do this in Calc 1. In Calc 1, to, to do this just solely in Calc 1, this is what you say. x is equal to e to the ln of x. Isn't that right? You agree with this? Because e and ln cancels. Right? So I'm, uh, to, to solve this using Calc 1 methods only, you really need to make x something more complicated. That, that's why it, it's hard to think. Right? And therefore, what is x to the x? That's this to the x. Right? And because you have two exponents multiplied together, you have e to the x times ln of x. Which means differentiating this is same as differentiating e to the x times ln of x. Now that's easy, because that's simply chain rule, right? Differentiate the outside function, which is unchanged, and then pull the inside function out, and you differentiate the inside function. If you differentiate this, it's uh, differentiate the first function, which is 1. Differentiate the second function, is x times 1 over x. Derivative of log of x is 1 over x. They cancel. And you get e to the x times ln of x times ln of x plus 1. And then, if you recall, what was this same as? No, no. Zero. No, no. E to the x to ln x is the same as x to the x, right? So that's same as x to the x ln of x plus 1, which is same as this one if you, if you factor out the x to the x, right? So you get the same answer, right? Uh, now, of course, it, it's challenging to think of it this way, but you might say, well, this method is quicker once you know, know this trick, right? But I would say that even if you knew this trick, Calc 3 provides a better understanding of what's going on in this answer. So if you think about it, this is like, on one hand, you're treating the, the exponent as constant. And on the other hand, you're treating the base as constant, right? So in the final answer, you can look at this and say, hey, the reason that you get this as the derivative is because the first one is like the derivative when you consider the exponent as a constant. So it's like if you take x to the x, now there, there are two kinds of derivatives, right? If you treat th th this is a constant value then, and this is what, what's changing, that's like x comes down and you get x minus 1, right? But if you consider this as the constant and that's the changing function, then you have to do x to the x ln of x. And you get this and this added together, that's the final outcome. Right? And the reason that the final answer has that structure is because there's the multivariable chain rule working behind it. Okay? So you get a better insight into this answer when you solve it using the Calc 3 method than the Calc 1 method. The Calc 1 uh, method looks more like a trickery rather than giving you a deeper understanding. Right? So that's why I like this method better. 